I'm going to reveal the only time that you need to hire a car accident lawyer. Hiring one may put thousands more dollars in your pocket and get you that money faster than if you didn't. On the other hand, if you hire an attorney when you don't need to, it can cost you a large amount of money and you'll have a huge regret. The easiest way to know when you should hire a car accident lawyer is to look at one of my recent settlements. Corey worked in the construction industry setting up antennas. One night, he was off work and driving his personal car through a green light near Tampa, Florida. Ricky was driving a pickup truck and had a flashing yellow light. Ricky made a left-hand turn and violently crashed into Corey. Corey felt pain in one finger in each hand, and Corey's car was badly damaged and undrivable. Police came to the scene and gave Ricky a ticket. Both Corey and Ricky had the same auto insurance company, USAA. Like most people who get into car accidents, Corey was hopeful that the insurance company was going to treat him fairly. And as you'll see in just a moment, he was in for the surprise of a lifetime. The day after the crash, Corey went to their urgent care. They took x-rays and told him he had a broken finger in each hand. Corey gave the urgent care one of his insurance cards. Good job, Corey. But there was something else that he could have easily and quickly done at the urgent care it would have saved him a large amount of money. In just a moment, you'll see how he likely would have done this if he spoke with or hired a lawyer. Now, Corey is a smart person, probably just like you, and he makes good money too. So the reason that he didn't take this proven step at the urgent care isn't because he wasn't smart enough. He, like most people, just don't have experience in knowing how car accident laws work. But maybe you're different. So do you know which insurance card or cards Corey should have given to the hospital? I'll give you two seconds. If you're not 100% sure, this is a gigantic sign that you should at least speak with a lawyer and likely hire one. I say this because after an accident, you can't rely on hospitals or even your doctors to ask you for your correct insurance information. You don't want your car accident to leave you with large medical bills that send you into bankruptcy. I recently spoke with a manager at the ER at one of the largest hospital chains in the US. He told me that after your car accident, hospital employees are told not to ask for one of the insurances that you may have. The problem is that the insurance that they're not asking for may pay for a huge amount of your bills. And as you'll see in just a moment, not giving the right insurance to the urgent care hospital or doctor can leave you stuck with huge debt. And by the time the insurance company gets billed, they may not pay it because they may claim that they got the bill too late. So what are the insurances that you should give the urgent care and all of your medical providers? I'll reveal it in just a moment. First, let me tell you what Corey did correct, because even without a lawyer, you're likely to do some stuff right. He gave the hospital his own auto insurance card. Corey had Florida car accident insurance and Florida is a no fault state. So Corey gave his own car insurance information to the urgent care and his own USAA car insurance paid 80% of the urgent care bill. But Corey made the huge mistake of never giving his health insurance card to the urgent care. And because of his mistake, after his car insurance paid, he still owed the urgent care a large amount of money. This could have been easily and quickly avoided if he'd also given them his health insurance information on the day he got treatment or quickly thereafter. Any lawyer who knows what they're doing would have told him to do so, but that's not the only common mistake that millions of people make without a lawyer. Corey was also eventually able, without a lawyer, to get his own USAA to pay for his damaged car. He'd now gone to several appointments with his hand doctor, and his own USAA car insurance company paid 80% of his medical bills, and Corey's own USAA paid for some lost wages since his injury prevented him from working. This was good news, but it was also bad at the same time. It was good because Corey got some money in his pocket and the majority of each of his medical bills got paid. But it was bad because it also gave him a false sense of confidence. Months and months passed by. It was now 11 long months since the accident, yet Corey still had a big problem. And it wasn't just that one of his fingers was deformed. Remember the other driver, Ricky, who also had USAA car insurance? Guess how much money Ricky's USAA claims rep had offered Corey for his two broken fingers. Corey said that Ricky's USAA claims rep offered a measly $6,000, which was for his out-of-pocket medical bills. 
That offer was from Ricky's bodily injury liability coverage, which is called BI coverage. It pays for your medical bills, lost wages, and pain and suffering. The adjuster told Corey that their insured Ricky had $50,000 in BI coverage per person. But even though Corey knew Ricky's insurance limit, he was still stuck without a good offer or even a fair offer. This brings us to the second instance where you should hire a car accident lawyer. It's when you have the following four things in your case. One, another driver is clearly at fault. Two, your car is badly damaged. Three, you have a serious injury. And number four, the careless driver's insurance company hasn't made you a fair offer or they've made you a bad offer. So why did Ricky's USAA make such a low offer to Corey? It's because Corey didn't have the experience to quickly put pressure on USAA to make a large offer. At this point, he realized that he could not handle his claim alone since he didn't have the experience. Corey called my law firm to see if I could be the lawyer for him. When we spoke, I asked Corey a few questions. I wanted to know whose USAA insurance, Corey's or Ricky's, paid one to fix Corey's car and number two for some of Corey's lost wages. Corey didn't know the answer. Which brings us to the third instance where you should hire a car accident lawyer or you may face long delays getting your settlement money. It's when you don't know the exact role of the claims rep who you're dealing with in your case. And it happens much more than you'd think. I'll explain. In every email that an insurance company sends you, you need to know two things. The first is who is insured by the insurance company that sent the email. In most cases, it's not hard because the other driver's insurance company will be different than yours. But if you have the same insurance company, then you need to look at the claim number on the email. Claims with your insurance company will have a different claim numbers than those with the other driver's insurer, even if you have the same insurance company. Now, the following applies to all car accident claims, even if the other driver has a different insurance company than you. The good news is that there's a straightforward step that you can take that may help you settle your case much faster. It's using an easy method to keep your files organized, and the best part is it's free. I strongly suggest creating two separate folders in your computer using a free program. One folder is for communications with your insurance company and another is with the other driver's insurer. This will keep you organized and may help you settle your claim much faster. If you don't do this, you will be disorganized and it's likely going to delay you getting compensation. So if you're not willing to organize your case using folders on your computer, then I highly suggest that you hire a lawyer. 11 months after the crash, Corey finally hired me as his lawyer. The first step that I took is something that you should hire a lawyer to do if you're unable or unwilling to do it. My client, Corey, didn't take this step. And the reason why this step is so important is because it makes the careless driver's insurance company less likely to make a mistake or lie. And their mistake or lie could result in you getting much less money. Taking this step that I'm about to expose is the easiest way to ensure that the insurance company is truthful about the coverage that their insured driver has. And if you do this correctly, then the insurance company is required to respond to it by law. Unfortunately for Corey, before he hired me, he didn't take this simple step and it delayed him getting sizable compensation. So what's this proven step? It's sending a written request to the careless driver's insurance company for their under oath insurance information. So when you're considering whether you should hire a lawyer, ask yourself, do you know how to write this letter? And will I be able to tell if the other driver's insurance company properly complies? I quickly emailed this letter to Ricky's USAA Insurance. Within just a few days, Ricky's USAA responded by sending us their insurance information. They confirmed that they had $50,000 in BI coverage. It gets better. I quickly gathered Corey's medical records and bills. I included them in a strong letter that I wrote to Ricky's USAA Insurance. I got Ricky's USAA to offer us $21,000 to settle Corey's personal injury claim. If Corey accepted this offer, after my lawyer fees, it would have put around $8,000 more in Corey's pocket than had he not hired me. Remember, I'm comparing this to the $6,000 offer from USAA that he said he got before for hiring me. So do you think USAA's $21,000 offer was fair? If you aren't 100% sure of the answer, then I strongly suggest that you hire a lawyer. Here's why. If you don't know how much your pain and suffering is worth, you likely won't get the largest settlement possible. 
there's a massive chance that the insurance company may be holding back an enormous amount of money. I knew USAA wasn't offering a fair amount, but the USAA adjuster asked me if I had a response to their $21,000 offer. My response to her was the following. Tell your insured Ricky to start gathering his bank account records because I'm going to ask for them. I also quickly resent a photo of Corey's deformed finger that I had already sent. And just one day later, guess what happened? USAA offered the full $50,000 BI limit. After my lawyer's fees, this put an extra $27,000 in Corey's pocket than had he accepted the $6,000 offer that USAA made to him before he had a lawyer. And now if Corey gets into an accident again, he'll likely speak with the lawyer on the day of the crash. He won't wait. But what about the situations where you don't need a car accident lawyer? If you don't hire one when you really don't need one, it may save you thousands of dollars. I reveal when hiring a car accident lawyer may destroy your payout in the video that's on screen now, link in the description below, so watch it now. And if you're seriously injured in an accident in Florida or on a cruise and you think that someone else may be at fault, click the link in the description below to see if I could be the lawyer for you.